Number eight. You can cut off a snake's head and you still might not be safe. Several different types of snakes, including rattlesnakes, and as you can see in these images, certain types of vipers can stay dangerous long after they're dead. National Geographic reported back in 2018 that a Texas man was mowing his lawn when he found a four-foot western diamondback rattler. He immediately Ned Starked the thing with a shovel. Then, when he went to throw out what was left of the snake, the severed head bit him. According to reports, this guy received a massive dose of snake venom and he had to be airlifted to the hospital. He became severely ill and hospital staff pumped him with anti-venom. It was touch and go, but he eventually stabilized. And this is not an uncommon story. Many snakes have zombie powers and they retain their reflexes after death. And the bite reflex is extremely strong in venomous snakes. Number seven. When it comes to who has the worst reproductive rituals in the animal kingdom, male spiders really got shafted. The female not only controls how long the bumping and grinding will last, but in many species, right in the middle of the deed, completely out of nowhere, the female will eat the male and not in a good way. She goes full man-eater and literally devours him because she's hungry from all the smashing. <laughs> For the male spider, it's easy come, easy go. But some of these male spiders have decided to take a stand against this injustice. So what did they do? They developed zombie dongs. I didn't say that wrong and you heard me right. When the female decides that the male would make a better snack than a lover and she starts to gobble him up, the male retaliates by breaking off his member while it's still inside her. He gets eaten, but his zombie wang keeps pumping. Believe it or not, the severed organ is actually faster and more effective on its own than when it's attached to the spider. So the male may be gone forever, but his genes have a chance to live on through the babies that are now inside the female. Number six, wood frogs. These are animals that can be accurately described as the living dead. These little bethifiers live across Canada and Alaska. What makes that habitat difficult for them is that they're not able to travel long distances to escape the harsh winters in that part of the world. So to deal with the extreme cold, wood frogs came up with a creative solution. They freeze. When winter comes, they hunker down and start to produce what's best described as an antifreeze in their blood. This substance is made of glucose and glycogen, and as the temperature drops, the cells of the frogs absorb it. The sugar in the antifreeze keeps ice crystals from forming on the cells, which would kill the frog for reals reals. Then they go into a frogsical state where their heart stops beating and they stop breathing. 70% of the frog's body is frozen solid, which sounds horrible. I can't even fall asleep without warm socks. I can't have my toes getting cold. The wood frog sits in suspended animation all winter until it eventually thaws in the springtime. Scientists hope that by studying the wood frogs and learning more about this process, they'll be able to improve our ability to perform organ transplants between humans. Pop quiz, hot shot. Every animal has a finite amount of time on this planet, but there is one animal that scientists believe may actually be immortal. Do you know which animal that is? See if you can put the correct answer in the comment section below and stay tuned until later on in the video to see if you're right. Number five, cockroaches are well known for their ability to survive just about anything. They can hold their breath for 40 minutes. They can go an entire month without food and some scientists claim that cockroaches could live through a nuclear war, brush the radioactive dirt off their shoulder and keep on rocking. But what's bananas is that they can go a full week in a zombie state. If you cut off a cockroach's head, it barely skips a beat. The antennas on the severed head keep on moving for several hours before they run out of steam. But what's really amazing is that their necks get sealed off because of blood clotting, but they can keep on breathing through little holes that they have in each one of their body segments. And the only reason that it eventually does die is that it's not able to drink. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Hope you're liking the video. 
If you haven't already, I have an idea. Why don't you hit that subscribe button? Because that way you'll never miss any of our newest videos and it actually really helps the channel. You're great. Number four, octopuses are famous for their smarts. They're the proud owners of 500 million neurons and they're clever enough to open jars. Most of their IQ raising neurons are located in their eight tentacles, not their brain. According to KQED Science, having these cells spread out across their body allows the octopus to efficiently process and communicate information. Essentially, the octopus's arms are brains of their own. Octopus tentacles operate somewhat independently from the central brain. Because of this independence, their tentacles still react hours after they've passed away. In fact, in Japan, these squirming tentacles are considered a delicacy. A dish featuring these tentacles is called odori dan, also known as the dancing squid. Japanese chefs will serve a freshly prepared and fully intact squid on a plate. When the customer pours soy sauce on the lifeless squid body, it immediately starts thrashing around in a full-on dance of death that for some reason Japanese customers just can't get enough of. What's actually happening is that the sodium in the soy sauce is reacting with the squid's nerve fibers, and this is what makes it start boogieing. On their own, octopus tentacles have been observed trying to pick up food and feed it to a lifeless mouth. That's legit zombie stuff. Fun fact about octopuses is that if they get into an accident and one of their arms is cut off, it's really no big deal. They can regenerate a whole new tentacle. The regrowth is so efficient and efficacious that scientists are hoping that one day they can harness this ability and give human amputees the capability of regrowing their limbs. Oh snap, I just said the word of the day. Efficacious. Efficacious means successful in producing a desired or intended result. It's basically the fancy version of the word effective. See if you can use efficacious in a sentence in the comment section below and we'll feature the person with the most creative phrase in our next video. Number three. Chop off a female fruit fly's head and she'll barely even notice. These zombie bugs can live for days without their noggin and not just live. They thrive. <laughs> According to Herman Spieth from the Department of Zoology at the University of California, Davis, without their heads, fruit flies can, quote, engage in complex actions such as preening, flying, and walking, end quote. They stay upright better than the fruit flies that still have their heads, and the males still try to get it on with the females. No surprise there. How is this even possible? Fruit flies have a very unique structure to their bodies. They have what functions as a reserve brain in their chest. And even without eyes, these winged zombies can react to light sources using their light-sensitive cells, which are located in their kidneys. It's answer time. According to National Geographic, deep in the ocean, there's a creature that may be able to age backwards. The immortal jellyfish's scientific name is Toritopsis thornhai and it can transform from an adult back into a baby, like Benjamin Button. And it appears that they can do it over and over again. Maria Miglietta, a researcher at Penn State University, explains that this is an emergency measure when crises like starvation or physical damage arise. Quote, instead of sure death, the jellyfish transforms all of its existing cells into a younger state, End quote. This remarkable age reversal is still a mystery, and scientists are hoping that by studying the cells of the immortal jellyfish, that they may be able to develop a more effective medication to help fight cancer. Number two. Next up is an animal that can live for 18 months without a head. Mike the Headless Chicken, also known as Miracle Mike, kept clucking away for a year and a half after his head was removed by a hungry farmer in 1945. Lloyd Olson was planning to eat supper with his wife when he was sent out to the chicken coop to grab the main entree. Lloyd selected the five and a half month old Mike. Lloyd's axe removed the bulk of the head but missed the jugular vein, leaving one ear and most of the brain stem intact. The head was completely gone, as you can see in this picture. But how can a chicken go on living even after its head has been lopped off? If a butcher slices the chicken's head too high, the slice may miss the jugular, but still take away the chicken's forebrain while leaving the brainstem and the cerebellum intact. 
This allows the bird to keep moving, and in some rare cases, even eating and breathing. Mike the Chicken survived the beheading and went on to become famous. He began touring sideshows with other unique characters like a two-headed baby. He was featured in Time Magazine, earned his owner over $4,500 a month, and was valued at 10 grand. This is clearly before people had the internet. Number one. Frogs can croak, swim, and fight with or without a brain. Live Science reported back in 2018 that a herpetologist named Jill Fleming discovered a headless toad in the forest of Connecticut where she was conducting research on spotted newts. According to Jill, the toad kept hopping into things. It had a healthy looking body and legs, but nothing north of the shoulders. Scientists are stumped about how this frog's head was just a stump. The popular theory is that a genetic mutation occurred while the frog was in a hibernation state and it had recently come to before running into Jill. But how can it still be moving around like everything is hunky-dory? It turns out that these zombie tendencies are powered by reflexive reaction and the brainstem. It's sort of like when someone tickles your feet and then you jerk without even thinking about it. A headless frog still has all of its reflexes. Emily Taylor, a professor of biological sciences, told Live Science in an interview that, quote, the brainstem governs many of the central and necessary parts of the rest of our bodies, like heart rate, digestions, and other functions. So theoretically, the body can survive with only that part of the brain, even though the parts of the brain associated with consciousness, memory, and decision making are gone. End quote. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you'll love the one we did on animal lovers that eat each other. You can check that out right here. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. And check back soon for a new video. Bye.